Hello, my name is Yuval Lowy. I'm the author of a new title by Edison Wesley called Writing Software. The book will be published later in 2019. It's not a secret that the software development industry is in a crisis. In this book, I aim to write the industry. The book presents my approach for software design, ideas and techniques that I have practiced successfully across countless of projects. A few words about myself. I'm a software architect. I'm the founder of iDesign, a company devoted for nothing but software design. I've had several ideas that are the bedrock of current software development, such as microservices, along with multiple groundbreaking ideas on process design and technology. I've published seven titles on designing and building software systems and some 100 articles. I've mentored thousands of architects all over the world in my ideas and techniques. Microsoft recognized me as a software legend, as one of the world's top expert and industry leaders, something they only gave to six people so far. In the late 90s, I was the chief architect of a Fortune 100 company in the Silicon Valley and managed the corporate architecture group. Before that, I managed groups and projects and designed large systems and projects. I've been designing systems and projects for almost 30 years. The first part of the book is about system design. The book starts with discussing what not to do. When it comes to designing a system, you must avoid functional decomposition, which is basing the components in the system on the required functionality. So if you have a requirement spec that says you have to do A and B and C, you will have an A block, a B block, a C block. That is the kiss of death on the, of design. So if you need to do billing and invoicing and shipping, you would have a billing block or a shipping block or invoicing block. Functional decomposition is death because it leads to either an explosion of services because you're not going to have just three things. You could have 300 of little things running all over the place or to deadly bloating of services that have just ugly dumping ground of every area of functionality. The idea here is to identify areas of potential change, things that could change, and those you encapsulate in services. Then you implement the required behavior as interaction between these areas of encapsulated volatility. When you do volatility-based decomposition, you start thinking about your system as a series of vaults. Each vault encapsulates an area of volatility, something that is very dangerous. Now, when a change happens, the change is like a hand grenade. You open up the door of the appropriate vault, toss the hand grenade inside, and close the vault. Now, whatever was inside the vault will be completely destroyed, but there's no sharpener flowing all over the place, destroying everything else. The idea behind volatility decomposition means you don't resonate with change. When a change happens, it's contained into a single block of the architecture. Functional decomposition maximizes the impact of the change because it decomposed based on the functionality, not based on change. When a change does happen, it's never in one place and likely in all places. As a result, changes are incredibly painful in functional decomposed system. The book introduces structure by listing common areas of volatility in software system and how to go about encapsulating them. Now, since there are common areas of volatility, the book then prescribes sensible relationship and recurring patterns of interactions. By doing so, the book adds structure that enables you to quickly design systems that can withstand the test of time. The second part of the book is about project design. With the architecture at hand, you can identify the various activities in the project and even their dependencies. This enables you to model the project as a network of activities and then find the longest path from the start to finish called the critical path. This gives you the quickest possible way of building the system. In fact, it's the only way to answer the question, how long will it take? The book then shows how to find the lowest level of resources that allows you to build the system along its critical path. This finds the lowest possible cost of building the system. But you can also find the safest way of assigning those resources by looking at how much you can delay starting each activity without delaying the project. The result is you can easily find what is the fastest, cheapest, and safest way of building the project. Now, project design is much more than just calculating the duration or the cost. The book shows how to craft different options for building the system, options that trade time and cost and risk, all in a quantifiable manner. This allows you to drive educated decision. Can you even afford the time and cost of the system, and if so, which option? After reading the book, you will be able to provide with reasonable certainty and acceptable risk the most economical way to meet the deadline or the fastest way of delivering or set cost. You'll be able to know what is the best cost and best schedule, and you will also set the project to accommodate changes. Project design literally restores sanity to software development by eliminating the maladies of gambling and the death marches and the wishful thinking and all the expensive trial and errors. None of these things should be part of your projects once you internalize project design. The book also shows how you can use project design to track the project and keep the project on time all the time. The book shows how to mechanize all aspects of project design. 
In fact, you will feel as if the blinders are off. You will understand how projects actually behave. But your book is fundamentally about communication. You will see how to perfect communication with top management or owners or the investors in your company and how to provide options that literally speak their language. The book shares my own secret sauce. It is a key to continued success. Architects cannot succeed based on architecture alone, simply because management do not understand architecture, so they will never reward or promote architects based on the merit of architecture. But if you start speaking their language, if you start providing them options, allowing them to run the business better, then you move ahead in life. Project design provides asymmetric advantage. It's like bringing a gun to a knife fight. If nobody else in the organization is doing it, they're stumbling in the dark, but you, on the other hand, will have visibility into what is going on and start driving educated decisions. You will see how to meet your commitments, how to become trustworthy, and drastically increase your value to the organization. These ideas will propel your career like nothing else ever will.